In 2012, Dr. Raja Isa Al Gurg was boarding a plane at Abu Dhabi International Airport when a woman hesitatingly approached her. She looked up in surprise. Excuse me, is this you? The woman asked as she held up a copy of Forbes Middle East magazine with Dr. Raja's face on the cover. Public recognition still surprises the pioneering leader, but ranking first on Forbes Middle East's list of the region's Power Business Women 2021 is just one of the many accolades for Dr. Raja. Today, in her office in Dara, cabinets showcase her most prized achievements and honors, including her Forbes Middle East cover, alongside photographs of meetings with heads of state and dignitaries. An inspiration for many, she is the vice chairperson, Isa Saleh Alkerg, a family-owned conglomerate that has been operated for more than 60 years. It is one of the most respected family businesses in the UAE, and Dr. Raja plays an essential role in its story. An iconic and accomplished leader in the Middle East and one of the Arab world's most powerful women, she has been a part of her family business for more than 30 years. Uh, the legacy of this family has begun before 60 years. And the founder of this business is Mr. Isa Saleh al gurg where they call him His Excellency Isa Saleh al gurg And uh, the business is there for a diversified business um, uh, into every sector. And that is, of course, later on, I will come to, to say about how did this business uh, help the family to progress. Uh, Isa Saleh al gurg is a self-made man. Uh, we are so proud to say that in this business, we are three generations, the founder and the f uh, second generation is ourselves. And then the third generation is our children who had joined the business. From her office window, dows can be seen clustered in the docks below as workers load and unload their wares at the Dara Corniche, Dubai. Each morning, Dr. Raja glances down and views the creek alongside where she grew up. She was born around the bend on the waterway in old Dubai, and it is still the place she refers to as her first home. Well, when building, I can say and I'm proud to say that building the UAE empire, we and the far-sighted of the chairman had built this company according to the progress of UAE. You can see whatever is there from progress. Uh, just take it like that, you know, uh, Sheikh Zayed's uh, mosque, the canal, the traffic lights, um, uh, uh, Burj Khalifa, Burj Al Arab, all these projects that were built with the progress of the UAE, we were there as expertise also to have our input into those uh, projects. So we are so proud in this family to say that with the progress of United Arab Emirates, we progressed so that we, uh, we were, uh, or uh, the farsighted of His uh, Excellency did not leave us really drag on behind. We find ourselves today as we are in 2021, we are alert and we are looking at the scope where uh, UAE wants to develop and we are developing into that area and sector. Dr. Raja's father, His Excellency of the Isa Saleh Al Gurg Group, came from a pearling background. Both his father and grandfather were pearling merchants working in a flourishing industry at the turn of the last century. Risa was a bright and eager man. He met a British doctor who taught him the English language. This allowed him to secure a job at the post office. Once he had gained experience, he was appointed as a commercial officer at the British Bank of the Middle East. Well, I didn't see my grandfather, first of all, but I saw my father and I'm still living with my father. And uh, the, the thing that I really uh, appreciate in my father's personality is he is a self-made man. He started from scratch. He was not born with a golden spoon in his mouth. And he, uh, uh, he worked so hard from uh, a post office boy, I will uh, say boy or clerk, and then to uh, uh, carrying the bag of a doctor 
to take him everywhere in the uh, village to or we will call it Dubai was a village a small village where he used to give injections and uh, help the doctor and compared to that the doctor would teach him English so this is how he started his life it's uh, his life was much more difficult than our life when we were born here we can say that we were born with spoon gold in our mouth but he was born with a very limited uh, income with a very limited uh, family uh, um, uh, interference nothing was there he built it from scratch from say 12 dirhams or 12 rupees at that time his monthly salary to wherever we are here today Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan and Hayyan, Allah yarhama, he is the father of this nation. And I can say that all the leaders who came after him, uh, his son and Sheikh, uh, his son, the other son, Sheikh Mohammed, uh, and uh, our president, Sheikh Khalifa, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, and the rest of the Emirates uh, Sheikhs, they really followed the real path of what Sheikh Zayed wanted to follow. And they accomplished his vision for the future of United Arab Emirates. He visioned the woman in United Arab Emirates to be empowered, not to, le to be left illiterate, not to be left in poverty, but to be empowered because he believed and our leaders believed that the woman is half the society. Without the woman, no, uh, no progress can go. Half the progress will be because the other sector or the other gender is there, but the women are part and partial of this whole scenario. Dr. Raja joined the family business in 1990. She speaks about the encouragement she received from her father and her sisters throughout the process. Well, uh, in 1990, I started the family business, uh, uh, I mean, with my uh, uh, father, the chairman, who encouraged me, in fact, to come into business. Later on, he encouraged my sisters, Maryam al gurg and Muna al gurg to join the family business. Today, as I mentioned, we are, uh, we are three only daughters of uh, Isa Saleh al gurg who are running this business. Beside us, we have our children who are involved into the business. And then here I can't call them children because they are all grown ups and married and with children. For me to come into business, it was a, a, a big change in my career path. I was an English teacher. And then I was a principal of Zabil Secondary School, where I, I felt that was my career path. For 12 years, 13 years, I was there. And I did the best of the best for myself. And I was proud of my achievements. And then when I moved to this family business, and the chairman told me it will take you years to get into the cycle, I was saying to myself, uh, is it worth it, you know, just uh, leaving that uh, reputation that I made for myself in this society and all, and come to a, a family business? Then I found myself, yeah, it, it's worth challenging. And I did challenge, and I came. Today, I'm proud to see my students are there and everywhere, in hospitals, in uh, uh, Dubai Municipality, in Dubai Economic Council, and, you know, I mean, every, uh, every department, when my people now from my company go, they say, uh, Mrs. Raja is your boss. They say, yes, uh, can you give her my regards because we were her students. So that is very touching for me. And I really appreciate. More importantly, Dr. Raja joined the group as an employee, not as the owner's daughter, an experience she is grateful for. Starting out, she was keen to prove herself to her father and to society that women can play a vital role in business. The next generation joining the business face a similar start. While not every family member may want to be a part of the group, those that do are treated equally. 
For Dr. Raja, it is vital that they are passionate about their work and receive no special treatment as family members. They were trained, and that was one of the policies of the chairman, that those people should not come to the company after graduating from the university straightforward because they own this company or they have shares in this company. No, let them go in the market. Let them see what is there in the market. Let them rub shoulders with other people in the market so that they know exactly what is the meaning of business, and then let them come. Hamad al Gurk and then Abdurrahman al Shaybani, they all joined the, uh, the family business. With them, I feel now comfortable that I can depend on family members where I will inject again others. Those people have worked outside. They did not come to me just after graduating so that uh, you know, they will feel that everything is easy for them. But yet here also, nothing is easy. Everything is counted for. They are counted as if they are employees in this company and they are treated like employees. They are not treated, uh, treated as owners of the business that they will do exactly what they like. No, this is a consolidated business, a well-established business, a big, I can say, empire that we need all to look after, put hand in hand to look after this, to, in to enrich it, to take it further, to the next step. In a country where an estimated 90% of businesses are family owned, the question of who will succeed and inherit the ultimate position is a major talking point. Succession planning is a part of the bigger picture for every significant family firm. Globally, figures show that only about 15% of family businesses make the transition to the third generation. Well, this is a very uh, good question. I have uh, an understanding that the DNA of every business is different from uh, the other business. We cannot say that every family business should go public. Uh, the family itself who are running this business, they will know the inside issues of the business, whether they are ready to, be, to go public, what are the reasons for them to go public, and what are the reasons for them to push it and uh, encourage the family members that uh, really uh, you now back back and then you just come at the end of the year and, uh, and take your dividends and go away. This, uh, these are DNAs in every business that every business has to see exactly what are they lacking, how do they want to go about it, and it differs. Maybe I am not into that boat of taking my family business to public. I am in the boat of growing this business for my uh, children, for their children, for any other generation to come. And this is, uh, it differs from one business to another. Dr. Raja El Gurg is an inspiring advocate for women in the Middle East, thanks to her continued support and encouragement of female Arab entrepreneurs. In 2003, there were just over 10,000 Emirati women in business. In 2017, there were more than 23,000 Emirati women running companies worth more than $13.6 million. She sheds light on equal opportunity within family businesses in the Arab world. Women are empowered in this place, and we are blessed to have leaders to empower the women in the United Arab Emirates. Where the woman had found herself today, it is not only family business, they are into space, they are uh, lawyers, they are engineers, architects, and so on. You can name them. A uh, woman had found herself because uh, the leadership of this family and uh, the, uh, of this country and the, the vision of this country is to take up women and men are equally the same in this place. Uh, there is no difference between uh, women and men in uh, getting their opportunities. I think one of other stories that I can remember very well is that uh, uh, they were telling us is that Sheikh Mohammed was going uh, through his office in, uh, uh, in the towers, Emirates Towers, and then he asked uh, one of his people that, uh, what is the percentage of the women in this office? He said, 80%, uh, your highness. He said, make them 100%, you know? These are the things that we are proud of, and these are the things that really encourage a woman. Yes, if our leadership has got this vision, why don't we? 
Philanthropy is deep-rooted within Middle Eastern culture. Every year, the people and government of the UAE donate billions of dollars to philanthropic causes. The country was named as the world's largest donor of developmental aid in 2017 by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. For her part, Dr. Raja was integral in the establishment of the Hisa Saleh Alkurg Charity Foundation, which was launched in October 2010 by royal decree from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. The foundation is a family affair that fosters and supports registered charities like the Emirates Red Crescent. Dr. Raja is also actively involved with the Al Jalila Foundation. Well, I think uh, philanthropy is part and parcel of, let me say, it's not me only, it's all United Arab Emirates, starting from the leadership, the top leadership, to, to see exactly what they are doing for the world, for their country. Uh, we are proud to see that it is, uh, uh, it is uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the leadership has got that, and that built the philanthropy in the, uh, in the heart of the people who are living here. Now, for me, I am running uh, two big organizations, that is Al Jalila Foundation and uh, Isa Saleh Al Gurk Foundation. And when I, uh, uh, I said, of course, Isa Saleh Al Gurk Foundation is a, a very private one that we do not, we do not uh, collect money from the market so that we spend. We only spend our own uh, money or, or, uh, from the trust that we have. But uh, for Al Jalila Foundation, when I sat with the community, uh, and I am the chairperson there, I, I sat with the community to tell them that we are building, for example, a research center for Al Jalila Foundation, and that is going to cost us that much of money. What can you offer as people to this community? That will be great. I mean, people were so generous to give us uh, whatever we wanted, we didn't even go to a bank to take a loan to build our building, you know. And we built a building worth of over 100 million. And that is all from what? People around you who believe in philanthropy. And I always believe that whatever you get from this place, and we have got in United Arab Emirates, we have got a lot to pay back to our uh, country. And here where I find it, it's, it's, uh, I am doing it, it's not a duty, but uh, I am doing it from the bottom of my heart to say thank you for my country. So uh, officially Dr. Raja is the chairperson of board of directors. She is a member of board of trustees, but she is much more than that. We started as a foundation. She was the first person, I was the second. I was appointed as CEO. And we worked together from day one. She was the first donor to the foundation. She always walks the talks. Um, she's someone who will not be afraid of putting in her hand in a project. So I always, when we start building buildings or projects, I was always telling her, Dr. Raja, or we call her Um Abdullah, your abaya become um, white from the dust. She says, okay, one day will, the project will be over and complete and it will be clean. So as a foundation, we did lots of incredible works because of support of her, of Dr. Raja. We have three main programs. We support medical education, we support medical research, and we treat poor patients inside the United Arab Emirates. We, as a foundation, we built the first of its kind, independent multidisciplinary medical research facility the Mohammed bin Rashid Medical Research Institute. It's a 300 million dirham project that we built it from zero with Dr. Rajan. Uh, when it comes to treatment of the poor, we treated lots of poor patients inside the United Arab Emirates. We spent more than 80 million dirham in the treatment. We have vaccination program outside the United Arab Emirates. Every year we vaccinate 1 million people in Africa. We give also scholarships for, for students to become doctors. It was always easier because support of Dr. Raj. 
Over the years, Dr. Raja has been recognized for her various accomplishments and has been the recipient of many accolades for her excellence and outstanding contribution to women's welfare and progress in the UAE. Uh, being on Forbes, the most powerful woman worldwide, I think that is an amazing uh, recognition for me as personally, but also for all the women in United Arab Emirates and for all the women also in the Middle East and the world. Because every one of us, every achievement of us, of one single person, is really followed by other achievements that they see you as a role model. Well, I think um, I'm one of those lucky ones who's had the opportunity to work with uh, Her Excellency Dr. Raja. Um, she's very passionate and dedicated uh, to medicine and health sciences. Uh, actually, once she told me that she was interested to establish a, a, a medical school and um, you know a, a hospital related to that. So her passion to, uh, to advancing health, uh, medical research and medical education has been outstanding. Um, uh, she's been uh, there since the inception of the Mohammed Bar Rashid University of Medicine and Health Sciences. She's been instrumental in, in uh, launching it. Uh, in addition to that, uh, she's also been um, a major uh, player in, in getting our partnership with Queen's University in Belfast, one of the leading universities in the world. Um, so uh, now she, of course, is the vice chairperson of the board of trustees of Mohammed Bar Rashid University of Medicine and Health Sciences. And um, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm very lucky to work with her uh, and be inspired by her. The most important achievement in my life is my children. I am so proud to say I have, alhamdulillah and mashallah, five children. They are all graduates. I depended on myself in teaching them, bring, uh, with, my, with their father, of course. Uh, um, Abdullah, she always thinks differently, you know. She always th says, think differently, be different. You know, we, she always welcomes new ideas. So, uh, for example, the research facility that we have in the Jaila Foundation is it's something very new. You know, the way that we build the research center, if the, the position of the research center in the building, it's not in the basement, it's on the seventh floor and eighth and ninth. So the way that we look at things is totally different, very innovative. We have a very innovative project called Basmat Rashid bin Saeed, which is a first of its kind donor, robotic donor recognition wall. Never been done before. So anybody from around the world can donate and the robot same time will engrave the name on the wall. It was only be, we were only be able to do it because of her forward thinking, encouraging us to be creative, you know. She's very supportive of that. A leader should be always stable, confident, know exactly what are their skills. Leadership is something uh, I think every woman, every man, every woman, every human being have got that leadership skills inside them. Now how to nurture that and how to bring them to the surface and how to know that those skills are within you as a woman, this is your duty as a woman to know exactly what is there inside you. And then bring up the ones that you think, those are the things that will build my personality. Those are the skills that will give me a broader scope to look at the horizon. And here where leadership uh, comes in. Yeah. Reading biographies is one of Dr. Raja's favorite pastimes. Her first and most significant one was that of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoun. Biographies. I like to read for, I read for lots of uh, important people in the world. I read for uh, Jamal Abdel Nasser. I read for uh, Obama, Clinton, Hillary Clinton, uh, uh, and the, the first important book that I read was the biography of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. I learned a lot. I learned how he is stable, how he is calm, and this is what I taught myself: to be calm, to be stable, nothing to worry about. 
when the worries come, you have to take your part as a person who can observe and then take action. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed's book really affected me uh, positively. And then I read history, uh, Sir, uh, Sir James Craig, the history of uh, the Middle East. And um, I read a lot about uh, the Arabs in uh, Spain, Andalusia. Uh, and after I finished reading, I went for a beautiful tour there to see exactly what was written in the books. It is there exactly in front of me. The pandemic had taught me excellent lessons, that the world is so small. The world is not big at all. Everything in the world shrunk. We were in our offices and we were looking for places to, uh, to expand and, uh, you know. Uh, uh, but then when this pandemic happened and everybody was working from home, we thought that uh, maybe this is the new norm of uh, the coming future. We thought about different concepts of uh, work. Uh, it taught me to be, uh, 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 not to take everything for granted because everything in life can change. And this pandemic has changed everybody, has changed the, uh, their attitude, has changed their acceptance to the circumstances, has changed uh, everything in life before we were different we will celebrate this celebrate now we are so happy that we are uh, uh, you know safe and uh, uh, we don't need to mix with so many people we have to keep our distance and we have to follow the rules and i think i think it, uh, it taught us discipline discipline in life yes among her other roles dr raja is the president of the dubai business women's council where she focuses on encouraging female entrepreneurship in the UAE, advising a new generation of aspiring leaders to continue working on themselves. My advice is that the new generation should be very uh, strict with themselves to teach themselves the ethics of uh, work, the ethics of life, responsibilities, um, respect time, respect themselves, respect the people who are in front of them because without people's respect you will never gain respect this is the most important thing and i think our new generation they are very well uh, educated very well looked after where now they need to look after themselves by themselves to reach the expectation of the vision of this country. so uh... I think what is very critical about her is that she's a very strong decision maker. You know, she doesn't let things hanging. We, we, we meet, we discuss, we involve our teams, then we take decision. And then we see how, whether it was the right decision or bad decision. And then we, we try to do the things. But so far, and if we look at the achievement of the foundation, the, the only seven years, oh, majority of the decisions were right decisions. And because we only are seeing growth, we see more number of patients treated, more research supported, more scholarship given. The Jalila Foundation is only seven years old, but the achievement is, is much, much more than that. A fervent advocate of education, Dr. Raja Risa Algerg has achieved a lot, but still has her heart set on doing more. One of her personal aspirations is to establish a school the lifelong learner is filled with gratitude for her journey thus far and acknowledges the many who have contributed to her success today. I thank not someone, I will thank two people. I thank first of all my mentor, Isa Saleh al -Gurk, my father, who was at the top of teaching me the nitties and gritties of this business, that today I am not only sitting here looking at the business and people should come and report to me. I do visits to my sites. I do, I do build with the builders. I, I do everything, you know. Uh, and I respect in him uh, teaching me the hard way that life is not easy. Life is very difficult and you have to maintain your presence in, this, in these difficulties and these challenges that you are going through. And uh, the other thank is uh, to my mother, Allah Yerhamha. 
that he taught me to be a human where I, uh, this is where philanthropy also came to me. That, uh, that uh, Raja, you have always to care for people. You have always to love people. And with your love to people, you will gain the love, first of all, of God, and then of the people. And uh, here I am today, alhamdulillah, uh, looking after this big family business with the, my sisters and my, uh, the siblings who had come to the business. And uh, thanking the chairman to provide us as a family such a huge business that it is a big responsibility, but we are there for it. Uh, so to me, when they asked me this, how much you paid them to put you on the list, I want to say to the whole world that Forbes for the last hundred years has been performing as a well-known organization that is uh, looking into all these things. I am there because of my achievement, because of my vision, because of the hard work that I have put for the last over 40 years. So we are there because we need to be there because we are recognized and acknowledged that we deserve to be there. And this is how I achieved. But I do give this as a present to all, as a gift to all my colleagues, to all my fellow uh, uh, members in all the Arab world saying that these are the achievements of one Arab lady in United Arab Emirates. Thank you.